and welcome to the Cuyahoga County Progressive Caucus Cleveland Mayoral Candidates Forum. Um, my name is Steve Haleko. I'm the political director of the organization. And before we get to the candidates, I just want to go through a little bit of, of housekeeping. Um, the chat has been turned off. Um, we asked folks to submit questions ahead of time, and we had a number of good questions, so we already have those. Um, and we're not going to put links in the chat like you see at some meetings, because we found that uh, you know going to the chat, going back and forth to the meeting is somewhat confusing. So tomorrow you're going to get an email with the four links that I'm going to describe to you now. The first link is to join the Cuyahoga County Progressive Caucus. And if you are not a member and would like to be a member to vote on our Cleveland Municipal Elections endorsements, if you sign up and become a member tomorrow, you'll be eligible to vote for the endorsements. Membership is free. Uh, you will start getting our emails. Um, and if you don't like what you see, we have an unsubscribe button at the bottom, but I think you will like what you see. The second link, deals with the fact that we are all volunteer funded and all volunteer staff. And we have an office and we have supplies. It's a donate link. And if you have a little bit of extra cash and would be willing to make a donation, that would be greatly appreciated. The third link is to a video of this event. In case you have to jump off early or you wanna forward it to some friends, uh, that type of thing. We record all of our events on the CCPC YouTube channel. And the fourth link that you're going to get in an email tomorrow is going to be to our August meeting. Uh, it's going to be co-hosted with ACLU Ohio. The main topic is going to be bail reform and what you can do to help with testimony training. So hopefully um, all of you can make that event. Now I want to introduce our co-host and tech person, Deb Klein. Good evening, everyone. Um, and just so you know, Steve, Kevin Kelly is now here. Um, we, as Steve said, the chat is supposed to be turned off, but we're not monitoring the chat. Um, everyone will stay muted. Um, just one more reminder to our candidates. You will have one minute to answer the questions. One minute um, for opening and closing statement. I will give you a 10 second warning. And then when that 10 seconds is up, when your time is up, I will mute you. Okay, without further ado, uh, let's introduce the candidates. And I, I think everybody knows what, what you guys all look like, but you know, if you could just give a little nod or a wave when your name is called, uh, that would be great. First off, Justin Bibb. Ross DeBello, has Cleveland City Councilman Bashir Jones arrived yet? Then? No. Okay, uh, Cleveland City Council President Kevin Kelly, uh, former U.S. Congressman and former Cleveland Mayor Dennis Kucinich, former Cleveland City Councilman Zach Reed, and State Senator Sandra Williams. Okay, let's get started with the opening statements. And um, again, as Deb has mentioned, uh, one minute for the statements and the questions. She'll give a 10 second warning and then you'll be muted when uh, time is up. So we're going alphabetically. Justin, you're up first. Unmute, Justin. There you go. There we go. I'm all set. Well, good evening. It's great to be with so many uh, progressive activists for this discussion tonight. I'm really looking forward to answering your questions. I'm Justin Bibb, and I'm running for mayor to bring bold, new, urgent leadership to our city. I'm a native son of the southeast side, and like many folks all across our community, I've experienced firsthand many of the challenges our residents are going through day in and day out. And as mayor, I want to prioritize making sure we do the hard work of reimagining what policing should look like, but also ensure we bring the fight to have real police accountability in our community. Secondly, we got to have a modern and responsive city hall to serve all of our neighborhoods. 
And thirdly, we must continue to improve CMSD to ensure that every child in our city has the skills they need to compete in today's 21st century knowledge-based economy. And as someone who has dedicated their life to helping cities, I've advised mayors all across this country. I've been on the front lines fighting for criminal justice reform and seconds. more equitable public transit. I'm gonna bring that experience as your next mayor. Thank you so much. Next up, Ross DeBello. Thank you, Progressives. I'm Ross DeBello and I'm a member of this caucus. Uh, these other candidates are all smart, hardworking Clevelanders who genuinely want to bring about improvement, but we have to pick just one of us. Uh, I obviously know that this group, more so than most other groups, is about demanding policy that will truly lead to progress. And I've proposed many policies because we need to change our system in order to fix our systemic problems. Um, these six really haven't proposed anything other than the platitudes which helped Mayor Jackson to four very easy election victories. I'm the only one who's against the current tax abatements, TIFs, and handouts that only go to the outsider campaign donor class. I believe it's these economic manipulations and inequities which are responsible for the poor health and safety outcomes in Cleveland. I've been for the $15 minimum wage, against the Q deal, and against Ten Gates seconds. Mills type fundraisers. They can't address those things because they want to outraise all their future opponents. Me, I'll win with my work ethic and the vision I think I share with all of you. Thank you. Now, has Councilman Jones arrived yet? Yes, he has. Okay, let's introduce Cleveland City Councilman Bashir Jones. Right. So honored to be here with you. Thank you so much. I uh, had a community, community resident issue that had to be handled, and I rushed over here. So if you see some sweat on my forehead, that, that is what it is. But I'm so honored to be here with you. You know, very few people have been more about the progressive agenda than I have uh, as councilman here in the city. The fact is, is that we are at a crossroads in the city. We are at a crossroads. We have to make a decision. Do we continue to go down the same path or do we change? Do we evolve? And the fact is, is that Cleveland is not a butthole nation, but it is the greatest location in the nation. But what makes it great are its three assets. And number one, it's its people, its land, and its lake. And we have to make sure that all three of those things are taken care of in a progressive way. And progressive, to be progressive, means to be courageous. And very few have been more courageous than I have. Thank you. Uh, next up, Cleveland City Council President Kevin Kelly. Thank you, Steve, and thanks everybody for being on this call. I'm uh, honored to be here. Uh, I am running for mayor because I care deeply about this city, and the city of Cleveland is in a very fragile place right now. Uh, we are coming out of what's uh, the second recession, Great Recession in just over 10 years. Some people are calling it a recovery. I am not calling it a recovery because we're leaving too many people back behind. We need to make sure that the Cleveland that comes out of this COVID epidemic is a more equitable Cleveland that we envision the Cleveland that we can have, not the Cleveland that we once had. We've got to bring everybody with us in this recovery. That's why it's so important that we have somebody that understands that we need to keep our trends going and lowering infant mortality. Make sure that hey. Thank you. All right, next up, uh, former U.S. Congressman and former Cleveland Mayor Dennis Kucinich. Thank you very much. Uh, I was the chair of the Congressional Progressive Caucus uh, after uh, Congressman, then Congressman Bernie Sanders asked me to take over the raids. Uh, the, I also am the founding member of the Progressive Democrats of America, which grew out of my 2004 presidential campaign. Throughout my political career, I've been at the forefront of every single progressive cause, including gay rights, human rights, workers' rights, women's rights, environmental quality principles, peace, uh, and and the urban agenda. You know, I made it possible for the Progressive Caucus to produce a budget which established priorities for urban America. 
and I'll do that as mayor. Next up, uh, former Cleveland City Councilman Zach Reed. Thank you very much. I appreciate it very much for this opportunity to speak to the Con Progressive Caucus here tonight. Uh, many of you know me, uh, 11 years working for the governor of the state of Ohio, four years working for Mayor Willie Brown, San Francisco Housing Authority, 17 years as Cleveland City Council, and three years working with the Ohio Secretary of State helping to save our voting rights. You know, as many of you know, my two mentors were what, you, what used to, what we call now progressive, but they were leaders in the liberal ranks. As you know, my mentor, who's gonna be coming to town stumping for me, Mayor Willie Brown, first African-American mayor of, of uh, San Francisco, and Congresswoman Maxine Waters uh, will be coming to Cleveland to stomp on behalf of me. You, as you know, that was what we call liberals, but now we call them progressive. I worked under both of them. They're both my mentors. So when Ten it comes seconds. to progressive, everyone knows where I stand. Thank you very much. And our last opening statement is from State Senator Sandra Williams. Good afternoon, Progressive Caucus. My name is Sandra Williams, a State Senator for the 21st Senate District. I'm honored to be here with you today. A little a little bit about my background. Um, after I graduated from the Cleveland Public School System, I joined the United States Army Reserve, where I served for eight years. After that, I worked as a corrections officer, probation officer, parole officer, and mediator for the state of Ohio. I spent 10 and a half years working in the field of criminal justice uh, before I started working in the legislature. I've served eight years as a state representative and now as a state senator. The issues that I'm gonna focus on are the issues that I've focused on for the last 15 years, uh, public safety, in which I do have a background in. Um, I have a program and a plan that will help reduce uh, gun violence in the city of Cleveland, like it did in several other cities in the state of Ohio. I was the sponsor of the Cleveland Ten plan, seconds. which increased graduation rates from 46% to 80%. I'm focusing on economic development. And I'd love to go into those policies. I want to make sure. Okay. Sandra, you've been, you've been muted. Um, okay, our first question, and this is for all of our candidates, our order will be Williams, Bibb, DeBello, Jones, Kelly, Kucinich, and Reed. Give us your thoughts on policing and the Citizens for a Safer Cleveland Ballot Initiative, and will you accept or refuse an endorsement or contribution from the Cleveland Patrolmen's Association? And so again, it starts with you, Sandra. All right. Well, my belief about the Civilian uh, Citizens Review Board is that it doesn't go far enough. I'd like to see a review board where after the Civilian Review Board uh, makes their decision to discipline or to uh, terminate a law enforcement officer, that we have some real teeth in making sure that those individuals are not going back on the streets to the people of the city of Cleveland. I don't believe it does that. I think we basically change the way or who actually uh, disciplines them, but it goes back into the same process of uh, the uh, grievance procedure as well as the arbitration procedure. And as you all also know, the civilian or the, co the police contract actually supersedes the civilian review board. So I think there's a little Ten bit more seconds. work to do. If the Civilian Review Board actually goes into play, I will be 100% supportive of that. And I am not uh, accepting any money from Hi. the police. Um, next up is Justin Bibb. I wholeheartedly endorse the Safer Cleveland Ballot Initiative because right now it calls for a special moment in our city to finally get police accountability right. I'm a son of a cop, right? I get both sides of this equation. And it's important for the next mayor to be willing to share power with the residents to ensure we have the right oversight, to ensure we have the right accountability in place and change the culture of our police department. We can have more smarter and effective policing and also do the hard work of getting real accountability in our police department. And I will not, I will not accept any money from the Cleveland Police Union. Thank you, Justin. Next up is Ross DeBello. 
Thank you, Deb. Um, yes, I do support and will continue to support, uh, even if the voters pass it, the charter amendment um, to make it permanent. I believe that internal affairs is insufficient to sharply police police. Um, I believe that any institution, including the mayor's office, the presidency needs checks and balances um, to get us to true accountability to where people are saying, oh, look, we never needed this because nothing's happening. Well, that's the effect. Um, I will not, I will support the monitors and funding it at the appropriate levels. And I will, uh, as Ms. Hardaway just got back on, thankfully, and I will not accept endorsements or contributions from the CPPA. Thank you. Next up, we have Bashir Jones. Thank you. Thank you. We got to get, we got to get, get as quick as Deb on that mute and unmute. But um, I, I want to say that I am not in support of the, the charter the way that it is. Um, it removes the power from uh, the mayor uh, to, to discipline. I get why it, I get why it's created, though, because the people haven't been heard. And I understand that tremendously. The fact is, is that we have to make sure that we hold everyone accountable. Uh, I won't accept the donation from uh, the CPPA, but I do want to work with the police. I think there's a lot of great police officers that want to do a good job, but there needs to be an ambassador and a champion that can bring the community and bring the police to the table. So though I won't accept the donation, I will accept uh, their ideas. I will accept their beliefs um, that helps our community because we can't do this in a silo. We have to do it together. Thank you. And then next up is Kevin Kelly. Thank you. I support oversight. I support reform, but I do not support the amendment. And, and this does not have an opportunity to be amended through the council process as if it was an ordinance petition. So, uh, so no, I do support my, the ideas of oversight of reform, but this takes away power from the chief. I know how to get rid of a mayor, but I don't know how to get rid of this five person civilian review board. And as far as the CPPA, I am not seeking endorsement nor funding from them. Thank you. Next up, we have Dennis Kucinich. Thank you very much. Um, first of all, I think public safety is the defining issue in this campaign. And for that reason, I support 400 new police, at least 100 new crisis intervention experts who can respond to calls that do not require police, the creation of a civic peace department where we make peace the central organizing proposition and law enforcement adjacent to that. We need to have restorative justice, and I intend to lead the way on that. Now, as far as the uh, Charter Amendment, I mean, let's get real. This is about defunding the police. And there's no reason to set up a straw man and say, well, let's not take the CPPA's endorsement. I'm not aware that they have decided to make an endorsement. And I'm sure I haven't taken any money from any interest connected with them. But, you know, I think that we have to work with the police and I'll bring them in so they'll support restorative justice and the Civic Peace Department. Thank you. Thank you. And then last up, Zach Reed. Thank you. Uh, first of all, the CPPA will not be endorsing this year, but even if they were, I would not accept their endorsement and I would not accept money from, um, from the CPPA. Secondly, this election is about neighborhoods. And for us to build strong neighborhoods, we need safe neighborhoods. So we've got to hold police officers accountable. We have not done that in the past. If we would have done that in the past, then Timothy Lohman would never have been hired. Tamir Rice would still be alive today. And Miss Rice would be able to hug her child because, Tim because Timothy Lohman would have never been hired because he would have been held accountable under my administration. And all police officers will be held accountable under my administration. Thank you. All right, our next question is this. How will you improve Cleveland public power to better serve the people and businesses of Cleveland? And what is your relationship with First Energy? And 
our order reverses. So Zach Reed, you were last last time, so you're first this time. Thank you very much. Uh, first of all, uh, CPP CPP needs strong leadership, and I will provide strong leadership not only from the mayor's office, but I will put someone in a director's office that understands the importance of CPP, the importance to the people. Uh, in the city of Cleveland uh, as it relates to getting good, strong power. But we also need to look at CPP being utilized in such a way that provides broadband for our, those underserved neighborhoods, that provides security cameras like they do in other communities. We own those utility poles. Therefore, we should be utilizing those utility poles and, no, and this utility to help the people in our community to help us rid our community of the poverty that exists in our Five community. Seconds. And I can tell you that CPP can clearly be helping us to rid our community of poverty. Next is Sandra Williams. All right, thank you so much for the question. Uh, as far as far as CPP is concerned, uh, the first thing I believe we need to do is completely replace place the infrastructure. The infrastructure is as dated as CPP. It has not been uh, replaced in a very long time, which is why many of us are having blackouts on a weekly basis. Uh, number two, CPP staff has been retiring for the last 10 years. They have not replaced the uh, members of CPP or staff at CPP who have gone, who have taken that knowledge away uh, with them into retirement. They are low in employees who actually have the skills to run CPP and the infrastructure. Secondly, or third, I would get uh, CPP out of the Meigs County plant. Uh, many of you know that Cleveland went into a contract, a coal contract years ago for a plant that will never be built and the citizens are paying for it every day on your utility bills. I would make the Okay, next up is Justin Bibb. The lights have been out in many of our residents and business owners across the city due to failure and mismanagement by this city leadership on CPP. Number one, we gotta get out of this 50 year contract and make sure we have affordable rates for our residents. Secondly, we gotta move Cleveland and CPP to the modern energy economy and leverage community solar and wind to fuel CPP in the future. That is critical because there are good paying jobs and the green economy that Cleveland can lead the way in. Also, I wanna make this point very clear. No one in this race is gonna have more credibility on day one to bring real change to Cleveland Public Power because I'm not bankrolled by First Energy. I'm not bankrolled or bought by the George family. I'm not bankrolled at all by any big utility companies. I'm gonna be fighting on day one to move CPP forward. And I'm, I have the real credibility to do that because I'm not being bankrolled by be, these utility investors and donors. Next up, Ross DeBello. Thank you. Um, I, I definitely think in order to end these blackouts, we need to review CPP structure. We do need to attack attrition and maybe look at terminating some folk and any nepotism hires. Um, we do need to staff up the city of Cleveland legal department, right? To fight that 50 year contract. I'm an attorney. Uh, I worked in court. You don't just breach contracts. Uh, we're not going to send me and your tax dollars to private law firms to fight out of that contract. Um, I'm probably the guy best served to not cater to wealthy interests. I don't know about Mr. Bibb. But we'll let the voters decide that one. So I have no relationship with First Energy and they will not hire me down the road. Next up, Bashir Jones. You know, it takes courage to be progressive. And a lot of these voices that you're hearing today are new voices. All you have to do is do your history. It's only a few of us who've been on the front lines fighting on behalf of the people. We're not new. 
to being a part of this. And we recognize that if you were to just do your homework on the past four years in city council, just the past four, you will see that there's very few voices who've been speaking up more about the issues of CPP. The fact is, the power is with the people. And we have to bring the experts who understand this industry and put them in position and listen to them and listen to them and hear their words. But this is not just conjecture or people just saying what they've done. And uh, no, to be progressive takes courage. To be progressive, you have to be willing to stand alone. And very few have been willing to be standing alone than I have, not just in city council, but as an activist. Seconds. So I want you to please do your homework and not just listen to those who are trying to get elected. Check their background. Next up, Kevin Kelly. Thank you. C Thank you. CPP has both operational and capital issues. We need to start by evaluating. Number one, what we need to do is make sure that CPP, there's a lot of safety issues for our current workforce. We have to make sure that operationally, we make this product safe for those that are doing the hard work, the men and women that are, that are in trucks, do the linemen, those that are keeping it safe. Operationally, this has been dysfunctional for just too long. We need to fix, we need to get people in there that understand how to run a utility. The, the capital product is good, but has been suggested, cities like Chattanooga have gone beyond providing, using their, their public utility to just provide electricity. Chattanooga is the, is, the model, is the model city for using your utilities to provide broadband access and to branch out from the current business models that you have. And we need to do, continue to make sure that we are going down the roads of solar, Working with Lico, 10 seconds, my relationship with First Energy is I launched an investigation from Cleveland City Council to investigate dark money attacks on Cleveland Public. And uh, next is Dennis Kucinich. I've just published a 660 page book about the history of Muni Light, and now it's called CPP, and about the battle I waged to save it from the clutches of the Cleveland Electric Illuminating Company and the friends in the banking community. There is no one, no one, who understands public power as I do. There's no one who's ever taken a risk with their career and risking everything to stand up for it. So what will I do? I'm going to start by cutting rates for residential customers of CPP by 10%. That will make it more competitive with First Energy. And we'll go from there and work to get more people subscribing to CPP and keep lowering the rates for all classes of customers. It's not rocket science to run an electric system. And again, I know more about it than anybody. Okay, our next question um, is how do you envision your relationship with CMSD, the Cleveland Metropolitan School District, and the numerous for-profit and non-profit charter schools in Cleveland? Our order this time will be Kucinich, Reed, Williams, Bibb, DeBello, Jones, and Kelly. Dennis, you're up. Years ago, as a state senator, I warned districts across the state that unless there were stringent regulations requiring charter schools to be able to subscribe to the same metrics as public schools, that it would be a drain on the public school system. And everything I said back then proved to be true. We have to strengthen our Cleveland public schools. We have to make sure that the students have the opportunity to get not only the best education, but also bring back extracurricular activities, those things that kids want, school, want to, to go to school to experience. We have to make sure that we transit into very heavily health programs that help make sure that eat the health of every child is protected. We need to focus on diet and nutrition for children uh, who are attending Cleveland Metropolitan School District. And we need to eliminate the top heavy administrative costs Right now, Cleveland Metropolitan School District has some of the highest administrative costs of any school district. More money into the class. Thank you very much. Uh, first of all, I went to Robert Ford Elementary School, Alexander Hamilton Junior High, 
and I graduated from the greatest high school in the history of high schools, John F. Kennedy. So I'm a product of CMSD. I enjoy my relationship with CMSD students, teachers, faculty, and the administration. As a matter of fact, today I spoke to the students at Campus International, talking to them about the uh, opportunity we have to uh, make them part of this system of working with the mayor's office, even at their young age. So I enjoy my relationship with CMS, CMSD, and I look forward to being mayor of the city of Cleveland to have a great relationship with the teachers, the great with the administrators, and the parents and students in that the school system. Well, this is Senator Williams. I too graduated from the Cleveland Public School school system, which is why I care about um, the students who are in the Cleveland public school system. I was the sponsor of the Cleveland plan. Many of you might know years ago, Governor Kasich was going to take over the Cleveland schools because we were in financial and academic emergency. I sponsored the bill that took us out of emergency or actually saved us from the governor and took our graduation rate from 47 percent to 80 percent and if you're looking at a five-year graduation rate it's at 85 percent i know that is not good enough so i have a plan to work with students from age zero to three to make sure they're ready for the kindergarten readiness assessment that many students and parents don't know about i want to expand the closing the achievement gap program to I'm put talking. wrap around is about around at-risk youth and then I want students to be ready on day one when they graduate with a skill and a certificate uh, in-demand certificate having mayoral control of our school district is a special moral responsibility that I will not take lightly as the next mayor here are a couple of my priorities in terms of how we can do a better job of improving public education Number one, we have to hire more teachers of color inside the classroom because all the data tells you that when a child has a teacher that shares their lived experience, they're more likely to be engaged in the classroom and more likely to succeed in school. Secondly, we got to bring the trades and apprenticeships back to our high schools. I was just with Bruce Walker over at JFK High School. He's starting an apprenticeship program for the machinist sector this fall. He has about 10 students rolling that pilot we got to scale those types of program, programs in every high school inside our district. And we also need to do a better job of investing in high quality after school programs in every neighborhood across our city. Because having a thriving school is critical to thriving neighborhoods. All these things are interconnected and we can lead the way right here in Cleveland with the competitive public education school district. Thank you. Next up, we have Ross DeBello. Thanks, Deb. Um, I want to continue to, to lobby, lobby, lobby at both the state and the federal level, including uh, quite possibly using some of the Federal Recovery Act funds to make sure there's a public, a good public school in every neighborhood um, and, and teachers aren't funding their own classrooms. I also want to understand how we're being lobbied here, you know, by the private interests. I think we have been losing funds for just our public schools over the years. And uh, it's, it's an interest thing, it's an influence thing. Uh, I wanna listen to the, to the teachers union and I've certainly met with the teachers union already and we want to get toward ending the di digital divide um, everywhere in the, the, the city and get equipment and printing capabilities. And I also want to fund the wraparound services and continue with the summer program, which is currently going on now, thanks. And next up, we have Bashir Jones. Thank you so much. I'm a, a graduate of Case Elementary, MLK Middle School, MLK High School, honors grad from Morehouse College, master's degree from Claremont School of Theology. We recognize that if poverty is jail, education is the only key. I think it's really important that we are in the classroom. As much as I will be in City Hall, even more I plan to be in classrooms. I plan to be in neighborhoods because people know what they need. Our school district must turn into more of a career 
career focus. Everybody's not going to college, and that's okay. I went to school poor and left in debt. So we recognize that we have to get our students prepared for the workforce. We must listen to our teachers. Our teachers know what they need. They are in classrooms. Not only are they trying to make sure their students pass the math test, but they're dealing with social emotional baggage. Our young people are dealing with school. So we have to work with our teachers, and we have to deal with the way that the state funds schools. This is a real problem as well. Thank you, Bashir. Um, next up is Kevin Kelly. Thank you. This is the most crucial issue that we deal with. A city cannot thrive with a, with a failing school system. I am a CMSD dad. I know what works for education. I know how instruction. I think the teachers did a great job during COVID of quickly adjusting to be to teaching remotely. But we need to understand we can't have a district where we have some buildings that are succeeding, but the district as a whole is struggling. We need to bring up the whole district and we have to accept the notion that we cannot fail kids from K to 12 and then think that we can put a program in place and that's somehow going to make them job ready or, or career ready. We need to start in the sixth grade. We need to push forward. We need to really promote say yes. We need to let kids know that there's a full option, a full portfolio of opportunity if they stay in school, if they work hard, if they graduate, there's a full portfolio of opportunity for them. 10 seconds. 10 seconds. Charter schools are a problem. It's something we need to deal with by lobbying at the state level. The partner charter school is okay, but for profits not. Thank you. All right, our next question. Would you support the city funding improvements to Progressive Field as part of a new lease agreement with the Cleveland Guardians. And Kevin Kelly is up first for this one. Thank you. Uh, progressive field, there is, we have not seen what the deal would look like. We don't know what the legislation is, is being suggested or what's being asked at this point. Any proposal that comes through needs to be thought through carefully. And we need to realize that Progressive Field generates tremendous amounts of income for the City of Cleveland's general fund. The question isn't whether we should build new and try to attract a team or attract a team. The question is, we already own this asset. Should we maintain it in exchange for, for the, uh, an extended lease or whatever else is, in, is involved in this? So again, this is too complicated a question to speculate on since we have not seen the, the, detail, the details of the agreement at this point. Dennis Kucinich. I think it'd be good for the taxpayers to find out right now whether or not there's been secret talks to try to put a deal together without uh, the participation of any one of us who might end up uh, being the next mayor. But beyond that, I just want to make it very clear. I'll do everything I can to keep the Cleveland Indians here and to keep all of our sports teams here. But I have a different approach to dealing with business. And here it is. Let's take Sherwin-Williams, for example. We want Sherwin Williams here, but you know, 25 million or whatever it is out of the general fund. I'd like to see the city really be a shareholder. I would like shares in Sherwin Williams that the city can have a stake in it, so we get something in return. You know, I'm a businessman as well, and I will negotiate on behalf of the people of Cleveland in a way that they get something in return from dealing with all of these entities. Because you really need someone who's a good negotiator, not someone who's going to give away the store. Zach Reed. Well, we talk about someone standing alone. Steve, you know I stood alone, city council, when it came to the Q deal. So when you talk about what we should be doing to Progressive, we should do the same thing. When I stood up and I talked to Dan Gilbert personally, the only one that talked to Dan Gilbert personally, and talked about if we're going to make improvements to Q Arena, then we need to make improvements to the neighborhood. So we should be, if we're gonna give $100 million to Sherman Williams, we should be looking at what, why aren't we giving $100 million to the West Side Market? So we've got the money, we don't have the will. So when we talk about someone standing along on a big project at an arena, I'm the only one on this call, besides you, Steve, I know you were with us, who stood up and said that we're not gonna give, I don't agree with giving a hundred million dollars to put a glass facade on a building if we're not gonna give a hundred million dollars to our neighborhoods. Next up, Sandra Williams. 
Thank you. I am supportive of working with Progressive Field uh, for their renovations, uh, but first and foremost, I want to make sure that the workers at Progressive Field are taken care of, making sure that they have a living wage and making sure that the benefits uh, are something that uh, the workers can accept. Um, the Progressive Field also is an economic engine, brings a lot of money in that is not included in the $1.8 billion budget that the city passes yearly. So we also have to take a look at that and see way to cost benefit analysis to the progressive field. Thank you. Uh, Justin Bibb. The reason why there is so much uh, public anger and distrust with uh, projects like the Indian Stadium is because we've had politicians for far too long in the city that have denied resident voice and the will of the people. Councilman Marie just talked about it. The fact that nearly 20,000 voices were denied when we wanted to vote on the Quicken Loans deal is a travesty. As mayor, I'm gonna lead the way to ensure we have robust public engagement and transparency when thinking about these important deals. I think it's critical to keep the Indians here, but the deal must be negotiated to serve the hardworking taxpayers of the city. There are great examples of this all across the country. In Atlanta, when they revitalized the Falcon Stadium, that mayor negotiated a major investments in affordable housing. The same thing happened in Minneapolis. My lens for these types of projects will be yes. around equity and transparency to ensure our residents get the benefits of these projects. Ross DeBello. Thank you. Uh, no, I'm not for um, a city folk funding the improvements of Progressive Field. Um, what Atlanta did with baseball teams is a whole different example. Um, this is all about our fiscal priorities matching our humanitarian priorities, right? We've been doing this for almost 30 years. Only now we've reached number one in the nation in poverty, right? Worst place for, for black women, least digitally connected city in the nation, number one in the nation in poverty, could go on and on and on just for wealth hoarding and entrenchment and having the best campaign finance for every campaign you're a part of. We have to stop this exact thing and put our money toward, you know, ending lead paint poisoning, ending infant mortality, the things that matter when we, when we look in the mirror every day. Bashir Jones. I got to get my friends to stop saying Indians. It's not the Indians anymore. It's the Guardians, okay? So this is really important for us to understand. Um, and I was, and I'm going to tell Zach, you know, you, you, you were the only council person. I respect that, but you were not by yourself because I was there out there as an activist before that. I was out there fighting on behalf of the community. Once again, that's the point that we're making, that you don't have to be an elected official to be a public servant. Listen, I don't have any issue with supporting our sports teams. The problem is not that. The problem is that we're not listening to the people. We're not listening to the people. We can support sport teams, but not more than we support the neighborhoods. Our downtown is doing great. But what does it matter if we're building a downtown that only our outside guests can benefit from and people from the neighborhoods can't come and spend time there? You know, so I have no issue with that. But under a Bashir Jones administration, the people's voices will be heard. And it's not something new. This is something that I've been fighting for since I've been in council. Thank you so much. Our next question, the order will be Bashir Jones, Kevin Kelly, Dennis Kucinich, Zach Reed, Sandra Williams, Justin Bibb, and Ross DiBello. And the question is, what is your plan to ensure that more women are in leadership roles in your administration? And Bashir, you're first. Thank you so much. Thank you. You know, my mother, who was my best, best friend, who I lost 13 years ago due to breast cancer, was the greatest leader that, that I've known. Um, and she was someone that made it very clear that if you want to be successful, true success is not about how far you go, but who you bring with you. Uh, if you want to see the example, if you look at my campaign team, it is filled uh, with women who are much brighter, who are much smarter, much more courageous than I am. And I, and I do, a, a hopefully, a great job in listening to them. So it's not just about, about words, but it's about action. So I really appreciate the women who are a part of my administration. I appreciate my mother. And when it comes into the city, you will find that some of the brightest and most brilliant people in the city at this moment, 
right now are women. Um, so we will, make sure, we will make sure that they have the highest positions and a part of our cabinet uh, to make sure that we lead this city to a better direction. Thank you. Next up is Kevin Kelly. Thank you. I am the father of five daughters. I have two daughters that are actively in the workforce. I understand the, the, the effects of sexism. I understand how uh, women don't get the same opportunities as men. And my administration will be reflective. We will have women, we will have women in very high positions. They will be paid fairly. They will be paid equally. There will be, there will be no will be no lack of opportunity for women in my administration. That's an absolute commitment. It's something I, I, would, I will do for my daughters. I will do because I believe in it. And the question, how do you do it? You just hire good people. Thank you. Thank you. Next up is Dennis Kucinich. Forty-four years ago, before it uh, became, it should have become more popular. I appointed women to key positions in the Kucinich administration cabinet. They include uh, economic development, included economic development, the airport, the finance department, the community development department, an assistant safety director. Women will play a major role in a Kucinich administration in top cabinet positions and sub cabinet positions and in helping to direct and make policy. When I was a member of Congress, Pat Vecchio, my district director, uh, somebody who was a spark plug of what we do. You know, women have had a tremendous role in all of the, uh, uh, in, in everything that I've done politically. And I'm very grateful for that. And the Kucinich Ten administration seconds. will reflect that. Thank you. Next up is Zach Reed. As I said, this is elections about neighborhoods, and my cabinet will reflect the neighborhoods. And you look at, go back and look who my mentors are. Maxine Waters, Congresswoman Maxine Waters, Congresswoman, the late great Congresswoman Stephanie Tubb Jones, Congresswoman uh, Marsha Fudge. And you think about it, people talk about, give Frank Jackson a lot of credit for steering us through bad economic times, but who's literally holding the purse down at City Hall. It's a woman, Sharon Dumas, Director of Finance. So my cabinet will be reflective of the city of Cleveland with women, people of color, gays, lesbians, and the whole lights. It will be reflective of the city of Cleveland. That's the exactly. only way to go if we're talking about progressive administration. Thank you. Next up is Sandra Williams. Thank you. As the only woman in this race for mayor and the person who has been leading for the last 15 years in the legislature and in our uh, federal government as a member of the United States Army Reserve, I know and understand the importance of having women in leadership. I give my hats off to women in this city who have been working very hard to gain their rightful place in leadership. I have been taking names of people who I've been talking to, and I am going after these women who are doing an excellent job in their field. Uh, my administration will look like the city of Cleveland. It will reflect the makeup of the city of Cleveland, and I will have strong women. I'm going after them. I'm talking to them right now about the possibility of coming on and helping me turn the city around. And I guarantee you, when you look up on January 1st or January 2nd, you realize that the city of Cleveland is like a rainbow. We're going to shine because women are just going to be all over the place, leading this city into a better. Next up is Justin Bibb. Well, I know firsthand uh, the importance of having strong women uh, being in your life. You know, the strongest uh, leader I know is my mom, Mama Bibb, who has the resilience, the dedication, and hard work that I see in many women leaders all across our community. And I intend to go above and beyond to make sure they're a part of my administration and cabinet and also are embedded in every part of the fabric of City Hall. But it's also about creating policy 
policies that support women all across our community. It's about eradicating the, the infant mortality crisis in our city. It's about making sure we are investing in women-owned businesses to bring back our neighborhoods across our community. And also starting pipeline programs like with the Levin School to, to really source the next generation of talent and women leaders to work in city government. All these things are interconnected and that's how I will intend to lead to ensure women are a part of our administration. Thank you. Next up is Ross DeBello. Thanks, Deb. Um, so my entire platform is aimed um, with the idea of empowering women and minorities, right? We're trying to, with the term limits and the campaign finance, we're trying to rip the political power away from largely suburban and out of state kind of men who, who are large scale employers and landlords and things like that. Uh, in the private sector, we wanna to follow Toledo and Cincinnati's lead and enact legislation that bans um, the history of your salary, right? Because we know that that holds women back in terms of equalizing their salaries going forward. Um, we want a, a liaisons in HR. We want cabinet positions appointed as women. Um, and we wanna be tougher on our private partners and we wanna hire more females in police and fire, but we have to change those cultures to get more females who want to even apply to those jobs. And we're gonna end the handouts. Who gets the benefit of those? Not women. Okay, our next question. What part of your work experience has best prepared you for this job as mayor? And Ross DeBello, you are up first. Thank you. Um, I think the best part of my work experience that's um, prepared me for this job is my time as for almost three years as a staff attorney on Judge Cassandra Collier Williams commercial docket. You know, I'd watch felony court all morning and into the early afternoon and then settle, help settle as big as $45 million cases in the afternoons on our civil docket, um, company versus company doing the dance, uh, putting on big shows. And uh, I understand the, the demand to, open up people's books and win on behalf of the taxpayers, right? And we wanna do that to eradicate poverty and, and put our kids in a better position to end the, the school to prison pipeline that city of Cleveland right now is so badly affected from and, and why watching felony court will drain you Ten and seconds. make you in your public office. So just watching court all day and being a part of it. Okay, next up, Bashir Jones. Thank you so much. You know, there's a lot of people uh, on this on this call who, who helped raise me in the city, you know, from elementary school all the way past past college and back, you know, a radio show host here in the city always have been an activist. So I understand the pain and the struggle of the people. You, you can't understand the struggle of the people unless you've experienced it fully. Because if you look at the what, you're gonna think that black and brown people and poor white people are a bunch of animals. But if you look at the why and understand the why, that's when you can truly come up with the solution. So as a radio show host, as an activist, prior to me getting into council, I've always been on the front lines. Very few people here have been more on the front lines than I have. And then I didn't stop my activism when I got into city hall. So I've shown, I've proven that I can help build buildings while simultaneously and more importantly, help build people. That's what I've done as a councilman. I've never stopped being an activist, never. Kevin Kelly. Thank you. As far as my professional experience, beginning of the time when I was a social worker, we were trained the first thing that you do is listen to people. The first thing you do is not impose your own values or your own the, your, your preconceived ideas of what is onto the situation. Taking that into city council, I am now the, you know, I'm the president of Cleveland City Council and I have to persuade 16 people that I have no disciplinary authority over. It's just a matter of communicating with people, listening and talking to people. And what I found is that if you look at how we built uh, First Year Cleveland, how we launched our council uh, program, it's just important to build coalitions, to, to talk to the people that are already in the space, to find out why we aren't working better together. And I think my experience has really taught me how to collaborate with people, how to listen to people, and how to get a result. Thank you. 
Dennis Kucinich. <clears throat> Thank you. I've been a councilman from three different areas of the city, served four terms in city council. I've been a clerk of courts, which is uh, a quasi-judicial office, mayor of the city of Cleveland, state senator, eight terms in the United States Congress. I've served in legislative, executive, quasi-judicial, uh, and have served in a capacity that's been dynamic. I've taken stands. I've, I've been a leader in every area of concern for this community. No matter where I was, I led the way for people. And so, you know, I, I come from the inner city. I'm, I'm not a missionary to the inner city. I come from the inner city. And that has guided my politics throughout my whole career. And that's where my sensitivities are. Thank you. Zach Reed. I can tell you about my professional career. I mean, that would be easy, but let's talk about what I've done. When, when, when some on this call stop people from wanting to get $15 an hour, when they make $100,000 a year, who stood up and said they should be making $15 an hour? That was me. When, when, when a billionaire wanted us to put a glass facade on a building, and there's some on this call who said the people's right to be able to vote on that shouldn't they should not have the right to vote on that who stood up and said they should that was me when they wanted to build a new convention center downtown and they didn't want the people of Cuyahoga County to vote on it who stood there and went out and got petitions signatures on petitions to ensure that people could vote on whether or not we should build a new convention center who did that that was me so when you talk about progressive, I'm Mr. Progressive. Sandra Williams. All right. I think my professional experience uh, in state legislature, the last 20 years, six years as a staffer, eight years as a state representative, and seven years as a member of the Senate helps me pre help pre prepare myself for being the mayor of the city of Cleveland. There is nobody in this race that has delivered more than Sandra Williams for the city of Cleveland. I've delivered the Cleveland plan. I've delivered the third frontier. I had the first ever line item for the Port Authority. I got money for the Irish Town Bend when it was falling in. That was Sandra Williams that did that. I just brought a half a billion dollars in to uh, clean up our brownfields in our city and uh, to, demo to uh, demolish uh, commercial and industrial properties. I've been there doing the work for the longest. I have the relationships at the state level, and those relationships are going to help me continue to move the city of Cleveland forward. Justin Bibb. Every job I've had over the last 15 years has prepared me for this moment. I learned from President Obama during this time in the U.S. Senate when I was a Senate intern that change actually does come from the bottom up not the top down. When the CEO of Gallup appointed me to be the, one of the youngest associate partners in the firm, he took a bet on me and allowed me to create a global business advising mayors all across the country on how to better use data and technology to improve basic city services. And as a board member of RTA, I fought with activists on this call for lower fares. I fought to make sure we were live streaming our board meetings before the pandemic so we can actually have public comment to ensure residents knew what was going on. And as a co-founder of Hack Cleveland, after the murder of our brother, Tamir Rice, I work with activists all across this community to, to fight for new innovations to address criminal justice reform. You don't need a career in politics to make change. That's the kind of leadership I'm bringing. Thank you. And our last question before the closing statement um, our order will go Justin Bibb, Ross DiBello, Bashir Jones, Kevin Kelly, Dennis Kucinich, Zach Reed, and Sandra Williams. And that question is, describe the most progressive policy initiative you will pursue should you become mayor. Justin? It's police accountability on day one. I'm the only major candidate in this race that's endorsed the Safer Cleveland Ballot Initiative to ensure we're gonna get real reform and change the culture of our police department. 
This is personal for me. I've lost too many friends of violent crime in this city. And to get that trust to make sure that every neighborhood is safe and secure, it starts with changing the culture. It starts with police accountability. And to me, that's the most progressive, bold change we can do in this election. I would encourage my opponents to support this reform because now is the time for that bold, new dynamic leadership to move our city forward. Thank you. Next up is Ross DeBello. Thank you, Deb. And this major candidate here has, is going to say two really progressive things. We're going to end the 15 year tax abatement. No other candidate wants to talk about it. We're going to start a public bank so we can get folk who otherwise are having too much trouble getting financing, financing for their homes and their small businesses. Um, you can't argue that you're trying to bring down crime and help our humanitarian problems if you're not attacking the wealth divide and trying to get us out of this poverty rate. So end the 15 year tax abatement and start a public bank. Thank you. Next up is Bashir Jones. Thank, thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, for sure, what we're going to do is deal with public safety, but we have to deal with it in a holistic way. Everyone has responsibility. We want to make sure that we hold police accountable, but we also have to hold community members accountable as well. Community members must do a better job of protecting their community and doing a better job in making sure that, they're, uh, that their neighbors are taken care of. The next thing we want to do is take that over $500 million and begin to leverage that money, and we need to put some of that money aside to help our seniors fix their homes. Our seniors are living in homes in some deplorable conditions right here in the city of Cleveland. And we also want to make sure that we are helping small businesses uh, with grants, dollars that can assist them in being successful. We understand that over 70% of businesses in America are small businesses. Cleveland has the potential. And I want to say this before I close. You know, we talk about the negative stuff in Cleveland. Cleveland has a lot of positive things. We need a mayor who can be a champion, an ambassador, and speak about the great things that we have, bring hope to this. Thank you. And then next up is Kevin Kelly. Thank you. I would do for the whole city what I have done in Old Brooklyn. We need to provide broadband access to citizens. It's a challenging problem. It is expensive, but it is achievable. I am broadcasting to you now from Old Brooklyn Connected. This is something that we can work with our partners in the nonprofit community. We can make sure that we, that everybody has a right. We talk about digital divide as if it's some academic topic. What it means is if you have access to a device in broadband, you have an opportunity to get ahead. If you do not, you most certainly will be left behind. Broadband for every citizen. Thank you. Next up is Dennis Kucinich. Thanks. I intend to bring to Cleveland City Hall one of the most far-reaching programs of any city in America, and that is to create a civic peace department, to make peace the organizing principle of our community, to have it affect certainly law enforcement, to have it go into restorative justice, to start to see what happens when you actually look at what's happening in neighborhood after neighborhood and see where you can deal with those conflicts before they bubble up into violence. When we make peace the organizing principle of our community, we create a transformation that will affect all of us. So peace, the central principle, a civic peace department, we can lift this city up in a way that will be dramatic and dynamic and spiritually fulfilling. Thank you. Thank you. Next up is Zach Reed. Well, let me, let me say this, people. We should all be ashamed of ourselves that 50% of our children live in poverty. So what am I going to do? Every budget, because I've, 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 I've worked through 17 budgets in Cleveland City Council. The budget is a reflection of our value. So when a director brings me the budget, if that budget does not have a reduction of poverty, I'm not going to be signing off on that budget. We have got to do something about the fact that we are the number one poorest city in the nation. And if we can give $100 million to this company, and if we can spend $100 million fixing up stadiums, we can do something about the poverty in this city. 
and our children do not deserve to go through another year living in poverty. Ten seconds. And look at the people, go back and look at the recording of the ones who have mentioned poverty time and time again. It's been me and Ross DeBella, DeBella, because we understand it. And next up is Sandra Williams. All right, so besides my education policy and my policy for public safety, one of the most progressive uh, move, uh, things that I would do is I would give contracts to minority businesses, to African-American and minority businesses so they don't have to be front companies for other businesses in the city of Cleveland. That's what people are talking to me about. And when you give those African-American and minority businesses contracts, they can then hire other minorities and hopefully we can end this whole thing about poverty. If those individuals hire minorities, then we can help change the landscape here. And secondly, I wanna cap property taxes for those residents who have been living in Cleveland for a very long time, who have found themselves in a position where they cannot afford to live in their homes because of all the development within our city. So capping property taxes for long time residents, uh, no more than 10% a year is what I would do. Thank you. Okay, we have reached the time for closing statements. Uh, and again, it'll be one minute. Um, Sandra Williams is up first. Well, thank you all so much for having me here tonight. It was an honor for me to be able to come and and talk to you about my platform. I hope that you all have had enough time to get a little bit of a understanding about what I hope to do in the city of Cleveland. I've been working very hard for this city. I'm passionate, I'm experienced, I'm qualified to lead this city. I will be the first African American woman to lead this city. And I hope that you will look in look for more information on my economic development, public safety, and education policy that I believe will help to move the city of Cleveland forward. And with your help, helping me get there, I know we can do it. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Justin Bibb. The election day is uh, 50 days away. Early voting starts in 22 days. And this election is gonna have generational consequences for our city. Racial and economic justice is on the ballot. Having a modern and responsive city hall is on the ballot, making sure we can finally have a world-class public education district is on the ballot. And if you believe we should go back in time and try the same old ideas, you're mistaken. If you believe that a steady hand is gonna get us there, you're sadly mistaken. But if you believe that now is a time for urgent, bold, dynamic leadership, let's turn this moment into a movement to ensure that Cleveland can be a city of opportunity that works for everyone. I believe I'm the right leader for the right time. Join our movement for change because Cleveland can't wait and trust you, we can meet the moment for our city. 10 seconds. By having the political will to get this moment correct. And you all have a role to play in driving change. Thank you so much. Thank you, Justin. Next up, Ross DeBello. Thank you, Steve. My, my fellow progressives, we're here to do one thing, decide which one of us is the most likely to make this a more humanitarian place. The poverty rate and wealth divide have got to be unacceptable. They've got to be the priority. I'm proposing changing our system, overhauling City Hall, ending entrenchment and attacking crony capitalism. It's a big ask. I'm proposing drastically reducing abatements, tiffs, and handouts. I'm proposing listening to regular residents. The other six, none of my proposals, yet tons of endorsements and campaign contributions, just like Mayor Jackson. Here alone, we've got the candidates of the county Dems, county Republicans, statewide Dems, trillion dollar nonprofits, the gas stations, and the 1970s progressives now using bloody mailers. You've got one candidate who will be both your puppet and the hardest working servant of this group, but it's on you guys now. Thank you for having me. Thank you, Ross. Uh, next up, Bashir Jones. Thank you so much. The first thing I'm going to do, I'm bringing Deb with me, because if I have her, I'm going to be good. Uh, thank you so much. I really appreciate the opportunity to be here with you. The fact is, we have to ask ourselves a question, you know, which the direction that we want to go. This is not a black or white issue. It is a human issue. 
It's not about east side or west side. We are one side. And your joy has to be my joy, and your pain has to be my pain. The question you have to ask yourself is who can reach the people? Who will be in the streets? Not just in City Hall, but who is willing to be in the streets listening to the people? You can't solve 21st century problems in the 18th century way. We have to bring the technology to have better city services. We have to have diversity in our public safety forces. We must be equitable in regards to contract that the city gives out because we must see more people having the opportunity to have economic development. Please, you can go to BashirForCleveland.com. Please join us. Please keep us in your prayers. Thank you so much. Thank you, Bashir. Uh, Kevin Kelly. Thank you very much. Now, thank you for this, this event, and it's really great to be able to talk to everybody. And again, this is a change election. We have not had an open election in the city of Cleveland since 2001, and before that, it was 1989. It's been overstated that every election you'll hear it's the most important election of our lifetimes. From a municipal perspective, I believe this is. Every candidate will talk about change. The question is who knows how to and who has a record of making change? And I believe that I have had a record of making change, whether it comes to instituting right to counsel, uh, first year Cleveland, pushing forward to lead safe Cleveland. We've done a lot of great things on council and there's a lot of great things to do ahead. But I need you to work together with me. Together we can make the city a great city. We are not going back to the Cleveland that we had. We're going to the Cleveland that can be, a Cleveland that brings everybody with us. Our next recovery has to bring everybody with us. And I appreciate everybody's being here tonight and all of the effort that you put in tonight's forum. Thank you. Thank you, Kevin. And next up is Dennis Kucinich. I've been at the forefront of just about every progressive issue affecting not only urban America, but the world in the last 30, 40 years, including my term as mayor of Cleveland when I stood up for public power and saved it and will restore it so we can have lower rates. My civic peace department, will make peace the central organizing principle of our community. I'm unbought, I'm unbossed. And I want those of you who are watching tonight to join this campaign, go to Kucinich.com and sign up to help us go door to door, sign up to get our signs uh, posted. We have an opportunity to change this city government in a, in, a, in a powerful and transformative way. That's what I've always been about. This is our moment, let's do it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dennis. And our closing, closing statement is from Zach Reed. Thank you, first of all, for allowing me this opportunity to speak to my progressive family and friends. I want to, first of all, invite you when I bring those two liberal giants to the city of Cleveland, Max Congresswoman Maxine Waters and Mayor Willie Brown, you're all invited to come. But I just want you to remember that when it came to standing with you with the fight for 15, Zach Reed stood with you. When it came to ensure that we can get lead poisoning legislation through, Zach Reed stood with you. When it came to police accountability, Zach Reed stood with you. I've got the experience on day one to roll up my sleeves and go down there and change the direction of this city to ensure that your progressive new movement, which is my progressive movement, will be on display every single day that I'm mayor of the city of Cleveland. Remember, experience you can count on. Zach Reed from mayor of the city of Cleveland. Now, if we were in a big hall, we could all stand up and give all of the candidates a big round of applause. But since we can't do that, let's kind of maybe do this or go to reactions and, and click the applause link. Um, before we go, just a, a couple of quick reminders. Uh, as I said at the beginning, we will be sending an email out tomorrow with four links, a link to join the Cuyahoga County Progressive Caucus. And if you are a Cleveland resident and join tomorrow, you'll be eligible for our candidate endorsement vote. Um, also in that email will be a donate link a link to the video of this event and uh, a link to our August meeting that we're co-hosting with ACLU Ohio on bail reform. If you are a Cleveland resident, and only Cleveland residents vote on our Cleveland endorsements, those of you that live in suburbs, you may have already voted on suburban endorsements. 
But Wednesday, you'll get an email that is titled City of Cleveland, CCPC, City of Cleveland Municipal Endorsement Ballot. And you will have um, the applications and questionnaires of our mayoral candidates that were here tonight um, and applications and questionnaires of city council candidates who have chosen to apply for the Progressive Caucus endorsement. Uh, we will send an email reminder out Saturday. The ballot will be in the Thursday's newsletter. Uh, we want it done by the end of the day, <clears throat> excuse me, next Monday, August 3rd. And if you are a Cleveland member, please take a few minutes to vote um, on, on all of you know the, the endorsements um, that we have for city council and for mayor. Uh, we do have a 50% plus one threshold for an endorsement to occur. Um, and in certain city council races, there's only one candidate seeking our endorsement. Um, when that occurs, we still ask our membership to approve or disapprove the endorsement. And that will all be spelled out in the email that you get on Wednesday if you are a Cleveland resident. So again, thank you all. Uh, have a good evening and good luck to all of the candidates. We'll see you soon.